Good morning, New Eden. Today is September 30th, 2023, and this is the Federation Frontline Report. Today we are going to be interviewing uh, Rula, Rulu, Ru Ralu. Ralu. God dang it, man. I am so bad at names. Ralu, who uh, plays Dora Genesis uh, Kaplan in Eve Online. So tell me, uh, Rolu, Rolu, Rolu. <laughs> How you want to pronounce it is fine. I've had it said a thousand different ways. So tell me, how, uh, who do you fly for right now? What, what are you doing in EVE Online right now? I, I've i spent my last few months, and I'm currently a wormhole. I do wormhole riding with uh, Black Powder Ballistics as part of hole control. Awesome. Awesome. That sounds like uh, a lot of fun. Um, we'll get into like more about that later, uh, because I want to take you in the Wayback Machine. Um, we're going to jump into that and take us all the way back. What what got you into this crazy fucking game, and when was that? I I got, I'd, I like to say I got press gang into it by a friend of mine who said, oh, you should try even online for around three months straight until I relented. And, and I think it was in early 2022, I, I downloaded the game. And there it started, and it's only ever been downhill since. <laughs> it's been the greatest fall down of a mountain I've ever had. And what what year was that? Was uh, early twenty twenty two. Not 20, that long ago. Twenty twenty two. So you. Yep. You've uh, and you've been to Fan Fest. Uh, so yes, you I got have. you got. Uh, we really like gave you the good crack, didn't we? <laughs> oh yeah, I got. I got the pleasure of the uh, the friend bucks at the start of the game, and I got to go to Fan Fest, so... Wow, it's yeah, It's gonna man. be the start of something great. And now you're being interviewed for a TV show that's gonna be super famous in the year 2055. So. Oh, yeah, I'll just take a wheel cat then. I mean, <laughs> Eve will probably outlive us, and they'll look back at this as a, as, yeah. a, as a relic of history. Yeah, it'll be a historical reference in the greatness that is... Uh, these Eve Online. So, when you got in, uh, just you know, a year and a little bit more ago, uh, you did jump right into wormholes, or because your buddy, I'm no, guessing, they're wormhole, no. or no? So what what yeah, happened when you when you first started off? What was the first like? You said I have a buddy that uh, that introduced you to the game. Are they still playing the game? I, I that's yes, my oh, they okay, have, okay. uh, they've been playing a game for over a decade. Okay. Uh, I have a lot of friends that got me into the game, and then it was like all of them dropped off one by one over the years. Because I started in like 2005 is when I made my first real character. I would say I kind of played in the beta, but you know, not really. I looked at it, it was like, what the fuck is this game? Okay, moving on. Um, but in any case, uh, so um, you jumped into the game. What was the first like activity that your buddy? took you on was is he like i i i didn't tag along with him because he he really wasn't like that good of a of a teacher let's put it that way he, <laughs> he gave me he gave me i think it was like 100 million esque and said go have fun see what you like mm. uh it's not i I've, I've always been really conflict of us in a lot of video games so i started with uh the pain that i would recommend no one go for and that was high sec mining Ooh, on my own yep Oh, high sec mining on my own, and I I lasted around two weeks. I got ganked, and I said, "Yes, this is the time I quit. I mm. this this is taking away my sanity." This is pretty yeah. I, it's a pretty lame game. What the fuck? Like you know, you sit around, yeah, and you shoot a rock for hours on end, and what? Sometimes it, you, you you switch to another rock. And did you even keep... did you just sell the ore straight up, or were you trying to do like industrial stuff? Uh, I no, I was literally selling it straight up. I I had set up at a uh, at a zero tax uh, Tatara. I would go out, I would mine the ore, I would refine it, and I would sell it. 
and you were looking to just uh, get more money to get a better mining ship yes. at that kind of point? And, Eventually, you know. yes. It was just, it started with the little venture we've all been in and just kept evolving. Okay, so then you quit the game then. I didn't quit the game, I just quit mining. Ah, said, okay, okay. So a lot of people rage quit for like, you know, a month or a week or a year, five years or ten years, and then they come back to the game. That's what I thought you meant. But so you had just been like, fuck mining, this is stupid. Yes, I... I, I got up to my friend, and I told him, so how do I start ratting? Uh, that opened up a full how long conversation that I can barely remember anything about. <laughs> and it boiled down to get Kaldari battle cruiser skills and get a drink. Oh, yeah, okay. So I did. Wow. I, I was told, start ratting, get a drink. That was my, uh, my, I didn't, I wasn't get told, I didn't get told in fits. I didn't get told how it was going to work. He just told me, go in air, click the, the various NPC ratting missions, and go kill rats. Okay, so, so you, you kind of learned uh, by level mission, or uh, ratting in high sec, is that correct? Yes, I okay. learned ratting in high sec, uh, in high sec, oh god, in high sec, I, I got a drek, uh, sorry, not a drek, uh, a drake, and I started ratting. I was going about ratting. I eventually discovered agent missions, and I did those for a while. Just, I set up four jumps from Jita and just did agent missions over and over and over and over. Uh, that, of course, led to, to burnout, and uh, it, I, uh, the, the part that led to that burnout was getting a, uh, a mission that told me, hey, you need to go to this O5 system. I was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. I walk into the O5 system, and I immediately get deleted by a trig rat. Oh, oh, oh. I thought, wow, this is cool. I'm really salty, but this is cool. <laughs> this so is interesting. I moved, on. <laughs> I moved on to what has become by now what I'm, I'd say I'm really skilled at. I thought, ooh, I like trigs. Can I go hunt trigs on my own? Absolutely not. What's the best way I can go kill trig lemons on my own? Oh, what's this abyss thing? Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, I wish I had never found the Abyss. <laughs> you still do I, the Abyss? Yes. To this day, I still do Abyssals. I I started, I, I'd i say I, I spent a little money. Might have opened up my wallet CCP a little. <laughs> and I got myself in a jackdaw and said, I'm going to do Abyssals. And then I did Abyssals, and I did a lot of them. I, I for the, let's say for the last, for... Nine months, I'd say. Nine, ten months. I did nothing but abyssals. I would come home from work and I'll wake up in the morning on, on weekends and say, oh, today I'm going to do this amount of abyssals. And it got bad. I was doing a hundred abyssals on a, on, a, on a weekend. It was horrid. I would spend all my day doing abyssals. And it was great money for, uh, for someone who had done nothing but writing missions and... Um, What's called and uh, and high set mining. Oh, wow, this is a right. lot of money. And I kept upgrading. I said, "Oh, what's the next step towards this?" I I stumbled on a few videos, and the next step was a Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna take this and go in a little bit of a of a sidetrack. Awesome. And take me. It was uh, when I started the game, like. Ben, you oh make a character. I, I asked my friend what race should I should I make her, and he said Kaldari, because he's starting near Jita. It's so all the comfiest start. For, let's put it like that. That's what he told me. So I made a Kaldari character, and that was the start of me lopping. Ever since then, I have had a relatively ironic and ever present hatred of any Fingalente. Oh, wow. It, yeah. it started as a joke, as I don't like the Galene, and it was all the, the crash a ship into that planet jokes and all the stupid <laughs> stuff. And That's eventually, awesome. I, made myself, I made myself the promise I would never fly a Galene ship. I have never done that. I have never flown any actual Galente and also Panda ship until now. But I, I told, oh, you need to get a Gila. And I looked at the skills and I looked drones and Galente cruiser. <laughs> It was a, it was a sad time. It's I not had to quite. let go. It's not quite Galente, but I, I mean, it's still Carista, have to learn the skill. Right. You. Oh yeah. So you know that you were like, I'm never gonna do that. 
Oh, uh, I'm never hemp, gonna do it. Hemp in chat says, Galente rule, send the man into the sun. <laughs> I hey, can send me to high. the sun. All the pain that I've been through till now, the sun would just erase it. <laughs> the abyss has put me for so much. Nothing will stop me now. <laughs> oh, I, but yeah, so you you finally you got into the gila, eh? and uh... I got the gila, and that started the most. I'd say it was great because I had people to talk with. I spent a lot of time talking to people in rookie help, which was great. When there isn't, when there aren't mods around, rookie help can actually get really, really great to chat in. And I did that for seven straight months. I would get a Magila, I would do T4 Abyssals, over and over and over and over. I made a few billions, I would I, I was making around a few billions per month, like six, seven billion. Uh, mainly because my I was very inefficient at selling my shit, and I, ha I started piling up blueprints. I had seven months of BP of Treglavian BPO drops lined up. Wow! And, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of BPOs. And after seven months, I get ganked. Oh, I, I had yep. set, I had set up. I, I stepped a little close to the sun, a little too close to Vegeta, and I come out of my abyssal. And I would say I'm gonna check. Actually, I should kill both for it since it's that. I lose uh, one around 1.8 billion. Oh, that's a little hit to the wall. Uh, but I mean, when you're making yeah. multi-billion, like what, what else were you spending your money on if, if not uh, for clothing? Okay. Clothing, really? Clothing. You <laughs> I have so much money. I'd say that half to three quarters of my assets is just clothing. So, you know what's actually really funny about that is um, it doesn't sell really quickly, but there's a there's clothing that you can get for your LP, and it actually is a lot of LP. Um, and I was like, is this really going to sell for like 200 million for like a jacket? Yes. And it was like, I will yes, buy it. yeah, it it sold for two hundred million isk. Like it was, you know, it's it, it's a, a, you're getting much more out of your LP doing that. But it's not like you can flood the market doing that. Like no, you know, you can do it every once is... in a while. But I, every once in a while, I just go and buy a suit and be like, nah, I'll go sell that. Like <laughs> clothing is a niche thing. It holds its value. Let's put it like that. Clothing is one of the things that, especially event clothing, does not depreciate in price. Ever. I, I invite everyone to go look at what the fuck the male Trey Glavian, uh, like, battle suit price is. I, last time I checked, it was like 16 billion. It just keeps increasing. Same for the, the Eden Cop suit. And I, I, a lot of my ISK I would spend... I would spend on uh, random ships that I would just keep around because I like them. I had to say I have Vargas. I've never used that Vargas, but I just really like how it looks. And all the other money would go in implants. The other incredibly important part of Abyssals, blinging the fuck out. I get ganked by Pandemic Cord, and I lose 1.8 billion in the blink of an eye. And I'm just like, man, that sucks balls. I'm gonna try to do something else. And I did something else. I I asked that same friend, hey, I heard sometimes you and the, uh, a bunch of other guys go on, on hunting trips and Nolsec, and Nanagang trips and Nolsec. I said, oh, can I join? And he said, I'll ask my FC, but I, I think you're just gonna be let in. Uh, I was let into this server, I was let into all this stuff, trusted associate and all that. And excluding the first five minutes trying to decide, uh, trying to decide for everyone's accent, which was painful, I had no clue what anyone outside of the FC was say was saying for the first two two groupings. I can't see. <laughs> I got shoved into an interceptor and said, "You you do what the FC says, and you you're gonna pad your kill board." That was great. It was it was great. Interceptors on, are pretty on, fun. Uh, and you yeah. get on almost all the kills until there's like some crazy fleet fight, and then you gotta be really smart 
about uh, we never really had any big fleet fights I I'm not gonna do any names but we had a little I, I would say I call him a little double agent and brave who would say oh there's gonna be a guy ratting in this spot <laughs> and we'd show up and the kill board was padded oh yeah oh uh, yeah that's that'll get you some good kills that's where my, my second ironic rivalry started. If the first one is with the Galanta Federation, the second one was, is with Brave. Ah. <laughs> I think they're one of the best alliances to join, as every single time I blasted one of them, they've always been really good sports about it. But at the same time, the joke that they all green out for, some, for no reason and that they're really easy to kill will never go away at this point. Brave Alliance, a subsidiary of Brave Newbies. Yep. I did that for a while, and it was fun, but it really wasn't bringing in that much money. Shoving myself into an interceptor at fucking 11 p.m. on a Sunday, it wasn't really ideal. It was fun, but it wasn't really ideal. Uh, then, started, oh, I'm gonna, I, I really like PvP. I'm gonna see if I can do some PvP on my own. And there's started Faction Warfare. After the the remake, after it all being brought up, I said, Oh, I'm gonna try it. I'm not in a corp, not with anyone in Portland at least. I don't plan to stick with these guys. So I signed up for Kaldari Militia because I wasn't willing to give up Jita and the Death to Galena jokes are still going. And they still are to this day. I signed up, I put out a slush fund of I think it was four hundred million isk and said, Oh, I'm gonna I'm going to shove myself in a ship, I'm going to shove myself in a hook bill, and die over and over and over until I either run out of money, or I start having fun. I ran out of money. <laughs> <laughs> I was not really good, and I, to this day, I am not really good at PvP outside of being told what to do. But so in Faction Warfare, fun. you didn't uh, you didn't make money off of uh, LP? I didn't make that much. I, it was really more of a go around and look for uh, Galenti militia people and okay. try to fuck them up. So you were more worked, actually, yeah. You're not doing the plexes at all. You're just you were going for the pure hunt of, of it at that. Yeah, point. I was yep. going there for the dopamine of the PvP. Yep. So and I try and mix those two by being the bait inside instead of going around hunting. I wait for a hunter to come to me. I yeah, I, I can see how that will work. So I started going around, and it was fun. It was actually fun. I lost a lot of the time. I ran out of the slush fund, and then I put more money towards it, because I was having a lot of fun. It was the first break from repetitively fighting rats in those three rooms, ten minutes at a time, over and over. It was a breath of fresh air, and honestly, I would say what kept me playing Eve. Because if I had just done Abyssals, I would have quit by now. It would have been driven insane. Yeah, there is uh, there is a certain, uh, you know, some people really like the idea of, of extremely repetitive tasks and, you know, with a, a variation to a small degree, you know, so you've got, you know, mission runners and uh, belt rat, well, no longer, anomaly ratters and zero zero, and you've got, um, of course, the abyssals and... Um, even Faction Warfare has a little bit of a repetitive gameplay. I mean, absolutely repetitive to get the money that you want or to get uh, to start making LP. But it does allow for PvP to be had while doing it, um, especially now that they've got like the five-man groups. You can do fun little small gang kind of activity and still actually make some good money. Um, I've actually been able to fund an unbelievable fleet of ships that I just hand out all the time because... Faction Warfare pays out well enough that I can make, you know, a few billion, if not, you know, more than that, just doing Faction Warfare and PvP at the exact same time. Um, so that's that's why I fell in love with it. So it's great. I'm glad, though, that you were one of the hunters out there that, you know, is just, you were really, like, focusing in on smashing the, uh, the competition. And that's what you were worried about. So where were you getting money while you were doing this? Or were you just, this was all just going straight out of the Yes, uh, the this coffers. was all saved up. Okay. It was all money I had saved up. 
a I had made some abyssals are a money printer, and the cost isn't the modules you bring in, isn't the ship you bring in, isn't the implants. The cost is your sanity. Right. <laughs> I had made a lot of money with abyssals. I had a few billion laying around, and what wasn't spent buying uh, buying the Gita Four Four suit was spent buying hook bills buying random frigates I would shove myself and go play around. And I had a lot of fun. I There I say, anyone who says that they do only ratting is lying. Because if they were, they would be insane. Oh, it's possible there's ratting a lot of people who are insane playing this game. So, Yes. Oh, well, yeah. We're all a little insane. I... I had a friend of mine ask me, "Why do? Why does everyone? Why does anyone play online? Even online? It looks like such difficult. It's like such a difficult game to understand. And once you get into it, it just looks so repetitive." And my response has always been that we're either autistic or insane, mostly <laughs> both. Yeah, I try to. I usually I've spent a lot of my time doing one repetitive task and being like, "Okay, what's what's the the other repetitive task that I could do in this game?" But yeah, um, the one thing that doesn't feel repetitive. I mean, to a certain degree it is. Go out, find something, kill it, get into a massive fleet fight, might maybe, or get into like, a small fleet fight, get into one-on-one -on -one and stuff like that. But each engagement is very dynamic, you know, and it's, um, you know, it's human, which is yeah. much more fun than dealing with a pre-programmed uh, robot, basically, that, you know, like, shoots out missions that, you know, you just blindly go do it doesn't matter what the story is of what's going on but like what's going on in faction warfare like the human element of it all the people building up fleets the people fighting the people controlling different areas and stuff like that like has such a dynamic feel to it that i i think that it's it's the one thing that i've gone back to time and time again no matter where you take me um 0, 0.0 had a lot of fun that I had with like doing like fleet combat. So have you done any fleet combat of like 20, 30, 50 man gangs that, that smash into each other or uh, have you primarily been no. solo? I most of my PvP has been solo and nano gangs. The biggest I've ever been was Chimney Chaps, dear friends of mine, and professional Brave Hunters. And I think it was the biggest was nine people. Oh, okay. You know, one thing that I would suggest if you're interested in going out and doing that kind of stuff, no matter, you know, who you fight for, what you do in the galaxy, go check out Spectre Fleet. Um, they've got some really good fleet commanders, really good guys. I'm actually fleet commanding for them for the first time in um, on Sunday at uh, 1800 Eve time, so 10 o'clock your time, I think. Yeah, if I can make it out of the, uh, no, no, if I can make it out of the hall... Right. If I can make it out of the hole, I could be that. If I can make it out of the hole. If. Uh, so, you definitely, uh, you know, check out the. Uh, uh, there's Spectre fleets that are going out all the time. They can vary from small gang of, like, you know, five to ten people to, like, 80 people running around. And, you know, you can get into some, you know, doctored ships and stuff like that. And there's, like, some. Some of the, like, big fights between two, like, 50 to 80 man gangs can last, like, 20, 30, 40 minutes, and it's just cons constant fucking adrenaline run the entire time. It's like nothing that, that I've experienced before. I don't like the big giant ones where you get over, like, hundreds of people smashing into each other, but between, like, 30 and, uh, you know maybe 60 people is kind of like a sweet zone of just like insanity that's going on on the on the battlefield so i'd highly if you at all interested in that go check out specter fleet it's a really easy way just to jump into those kinds of situations yeah i'll i'll, uh, I'll keep it in mind god what was I? I i forgot oh so um you had just you know started getting you know you felt like faction warfare had kind of set you up uh to really be like the game that you'd moved away yeah, from the yeah. mission running and stuff like that so what what happened with did you just run out of money or did you find I, a new activity that you had to do before you ran out of money? i didn't run out of money but 
um, it was the I, I felt oh I've had enough of my free time I've had enough fun I'm gonna go back to abyssals because my money wasn't running out yet I wasn't a red which was a bit of a problem so before I ran out I said oh um, by by what I know wormhole's face is the safest space you can run out so I went to my the friend that got me into the game that I at that point became my boyfriend. And oh, I said, awesome. "Hey, can you, can you, can you go ask your um, your your court pleader if they can give me a space in your court?" And he said, "Sure." He didn't do it for a week. I proceeded to bother him until he actually did it. I got in. I think it was like a day after that. I got told, "Oh, here's our here's our hole. Uh, if you want, we'll hold your stuff. If you can do it on your own." Do it on your own. I I did, and I brought all my stuff in. By my all my stuff, I meant yeah. just my gila, my gila, and two hundred and fifty exotic T five filaments. <laughs> can you do uh, filaments in wormhole space? Yes, yes. That's why I moved that. It's lonely. It's it was a big it's a bit system where you live in. It's pretty big, so unless you go scanning um, uh, bot, uh, astral body by astral body, you most likely will not find a guy that's doing uh, abyssals in the middle of fucking nowhere. And the six astro and the uh, the six stations. I think it's like three astro houses and three Raitaris should spook you off enough. Okay. And I started doing my abyssals there, and it was it was great because for once I had a people I would talk with while I was doing my abyssals. I would get in the chat and maybe talk with the guy that's probing down the holes, or maybe talk with the guy that's doing the sleeper rants, or I, maybe I would just have a chit chat and get a few pointers from the guys that ran the C fives on whenever they ran ops. It was also the uh, the time when our corp that to this day is still like ninety percent US players was actually branching out into EU. So I was like one of the six people that was from the EU time zone. It was, it was a lot of fun. I finally had a group of people I would say, "Oh, I play with these guys." Those are mm -hmm. the people I play with. Those are people I have fun with. It also completely changed my view of the game. Uh, I I don't know who it was at FanFest that said that playing Eve without a corp is uh, is a fucking incredible effort, but they were right. The change in between oh my main form of human interaction is rookie help to I have a Discord server and I can go talk with people whenever I am into my thirty seventh abyssal straight and I see nothing but Zoria Trigger's face laughing at me. There's there's a fair bit of a difference. I started printing money there as well, and still on the the abyssal thing. Doing high tier abyssals was is to this day, fuck is boring. CCP designed so the T five T five abyssals can barely be done, and T six we do out of magic, an incredible bling. When they were first made, they explicitly said, "Oh, we didn't expect players to do them," and then we did. Then we very much did. And taught them that if you leave EVE players with a calculator and enough math to do, we will solve every problem in the universe. <laughs> Doing Abyssals runs a tight ship. A very, very tight ship. You get into a room, you look at the rat, you roughly look at the rats, you say, I'm in this room. Who do I have to target? The, the leashing, the... the Nosferatu rats. And you target those two first, and then you target the, uh... The webbing rats, and then the scramming rats, and you do... Everything is done in a very, very specific order, because if you don't, you die. And you see 8 billion go down the drain, and you start asking what the fuck you're doing in your life. <laughs> and once you've done the same rhythm for 80 times on a Sunday, you start really questioning what you're doing. And having someone to actually talk with was a complete change of pace, because originally I was doing it on my own, well, my only company was whatever podcasts I could find on Twitch and the people I could bother on this guy. And my thoughts at the time weren't coherent. I am drunk right now, and I was <laughs> drunk back then. 
Uh, eventually, I also had enough spare scratch to say half of the wormhole fun is ratting. Let's try wormhole ratting. That was also really fun. It works mostly the same as missiles, is in you run an incredibly tight ship, everything has been done by someone else, you have a specific fit, you think, oh, there's the battleship rat. I orbit at 20 kilometers and I kill him and then I kill the one that webs and I kill the one that scrams and since every side is the same. But um but um but um but um. Right. Uh the the loot also being the same made me wish I had the uh the luck of Nulsic uh Radis, because sometimes you see them drop two billions worth of model and you say, I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> But 300 million, doing 300 million every 20 or 30 minutes was. But it didn't print money as hard as pistols, but it also gave me a lot of money to have fun with. Once again, most of it was spent in clothing and the red flex. <laughs> so, did you continue to do, like, uh, if any faction warfare, like jumping in for a time to do some enlistment to go fight? Very, or... very rarely. It quickly... This was the time when E for me became a second drop. I oh, would okay. dedicate an amount of time to doing wormhole ratting, and then I would switch it up to missile running. And sometimes when I got incredibly bored of both, I would take my pod, my way too expensive pod, I would go into to high sec when, whenever we had a Gia hole. And... Um, if if I really felt like it, I would just fit a ship up in Jita and go that way. Else, I would bring my. What am I? Would either ask the corp hauler or I would bring mine, and just buy a fuck ton of kikis. <laughs> I would buy as many kikis as I had money to, and or as many. God, what's the trade Galavian frigate? It's the fuck. <laughs> Don't call it. It's called. It is the. Um, I'm drawing a blank. The Damarek. Yes, the Damarek. yes, yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to say Cursa, Damarek. and I was like, no, that's not right. The the ship for us, let me see if I can recall. It's the Damarek, then it's the Kikimura, the Vatmak, the Lodgy ship no one uses, the Drekovass, and the Vatmak. And this is Nitra, which also no one uses. I, I would buy a fuck ton of uh, Kikis because they were the Doctrine ships I would ran I was running with that Nano Gang, and uh, Damavix because I would use them in Faction Warfare. I would buy a fuck ton of them whenever we had a hole that would lead straight into um into Kaldari and or Galenti Losek. I would throw myself in, and if anyone was Galmel, they were free prey. I mostly padded out their kill boards. Really padded out their kill boards, <laughs> and I don't know how I feel about it. But it was also really fun because sometimes you just show up on a guy who's never had PvP before, and you just kind of stare at each other, and then you kill him because you've got technological superiority and laugh about it, but <laughs> feel bad because it wasn't a fair fight. Uh, that's the thing in Eve is that it's. I feel like there is no fair fight. I don't think that uh, any fight is fair. Everybody is going in to try and have the advantage to win. And there is, like, complete and utter over-advantage of winning in a PvP match against people. Um, that is kind of like, that's unfair. However, the other people, for the most part, have to either fuck up or choose to engage in that combat. Um, yeah. And so... The ones that are fucking up, I don't feel bad about. We just stumbled across you or whatever, and, you know, you just weren't... You were ratting, you weren't keep paying attention to what was going on, you're running a plex, you weren't paying attention to what was going on. I drop in on you, I catch you, I murder you with a group of people. That, that sucks. But those people, if they're watching local, if they're, you know, checking D-scan, you've got ways and tools in EVE in order to get away. So... Yes, you're a bunny rabbit, and you're mad the wolf ate you. That's fucked up, but that is also understandable. But really, a wolf ate a bunny. What were you gonna, you know? <laughs> who's why are you crying? <laughs> like, move on. Yeah, you're it's an immortal happened. bunny. 
be happy you're an immortal bunny. <laughs> and and so, and you can morph into a wolf if you want and try it. And then you get in fight with other wolves and then all of a sudden you find out there's dire wolves and then you find out that there's fucking gigantic titans that will just stomp on you. Um, not the ship, well the ship too, but uh, you know, but there's this badass people out there who really know what the fuck they're doing and are flying really badass ships. There's a lot of people who are in between barely knowing what the fuck to do in PvP and, you know, doing pretty good at PvP. Most people suck. That's just the way that it is. It's uh, it's one of the most beautiful things I think there is about EVE is that no matter how much you do it, it's not easy to become really good at EVE unless you're spending a lot of ISK on doing that. And it takes a lot of experience to even get to that point where you can spend a lot of ISK in order to actually have some really cool toys. Um, but in general, I would say, yeah, that don't feel bad about, about murdering people uh, you know, they had to either fuck up or choose to fight you. And if you win, then that was their fault, not yours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was there. I say it was six to seven months of just straight sailing. I would do all of this. I kept my I kept myself playing the game, and I had fun. Uh, most of the ratting felt like work, but I I had fun. I mostly had fun. Then I had an epiphany. I watched the master we just discussed at work. I was on another mass. I dare say one of my... I didn't do many of those Nana Gang raids, but when I was there, I had a lot, lot of fun. I watched a, a man who I can't even really recall his name at this point. I do remember one thing about him, and that it was the, the guy that run the security operations during the building of Steve. First time. Oh, okay, yeah. My first question no was, well. how the fuck, how the fuck did we run into him? Second question is, why the fuck is he running with a bunch of drunk British men and an Italian? <laughs> I saw him. It was three tunes all at once, a hack, and two tier 3 cruisers, I think it was like a pretty sound Loki, and I saw him slaughter a brave fleet. 50 and 20 people just <laughs> gone down the drain. I watched it from the sidelines and I wasn't... I, I was the first one to ask, can I get some loot out of that? <laughs> and he looked down at me from upon his mighty throne and said, yes child, you shall have the loot. Of course, it wasn't that way. It was a lot more polite and a lot more alcohol fueled. But that's how it felt. <laughs> Watching someone who had z like gave zero fucks about his money because he was sitting on a pile of this so big you could make a boat out of it, and he just said, "Sure, you're gonna have a look. I'm just here to fine." And I thought, <laughs> "Fuck it, I want to be like that guy. He's so chill." Alas, I could not be like that guy, and like most new bros and all relatively new people, ISK is to this day a concern. Mainly because I have I make really bad financial decisions. I am the owner of a uh, uh, a trade Galadian battle suit. Uh, I snatch one on the cheetah market for eight and a half billion. I do not regret it. It's a great piece of clothing. And I, praise God, I made a female character, so most clothing is cheaper. But eight and a half billion is a decent hit to the wallet for anyone. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, so I recently sold an Ikatursa All-Star Casino skin for 42 billion isk. God. I won it at FanFest on the spinny wheel. And it was really funny because... Oh, first, first, God. So, like, I, I, I spin the first time, and I got a um, 500 plex, I think. And I was like, awesome. That's great. Oh, that's nice. That's, that's, that's solid. I spent 20 bucks on charity, and now I have basically $20 worth, you know, give or take, um, in EVE. And, uh, and then I was like, okay. So, so you know, I, I had paid for three. So, I think the second one was the Ikatursa skin. I was like, okay, that's cool. I don't know what that is, but uh, I don't really care about skins. 
but uh, yeah, I know I can sell them. So we'll, uh, like, but in the you know my immediate thought was just, oh, that's cool. All right, next, and then I got uh, like spin again, and then I got a uh, Eve Online magazine, and I picked at random the ones they had like two or three that were out. I picked up the one that was random, and I was like got back and I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, this is in 2006. This is when I made Frozen Fallout and I like fell in love with the game. Like I had played a little bit in the beta, a little bit in 2005, but 2006 is when I made Frozen Fallout and I just like went hardcore into EVE Online and I've been, never been able to get out of the, the hole for more than like three months where I'll be like, I'll take like a three month, maybe like half of a year vacation and then I'll come back to the game and be like, all right, this is going to be epic. Let's do this. My uh, crack conviction has not let go yet. <laughs> yeah, so I got really lucky, though. I've, I've got back and I found out it was 40, you know, it was like 40 some odd billion. A guy offered me 30 billion and I was like, I'm tempted just to get rid of this and give me a lot of money because that's already more money than it's worth to me. You know, to me, it was worth a couple billion, maybe, you know, maybe. Call it a pain. You know, like that would be, you know, if I, it looked cool, it was awesome. You know, it had holographs and all this, you know, like it's, it's the casino skin. It's like for the Ikaturza, it's pretty epic. Um, but I'm not, I don't fly the Ikaturza. I probably never will really fly the Ikaturza. Um, I'm way more in faction ships, you know, if it had been a, like, to be honest, I would have just been happier f for if I would just use it as a skin. I'd be much happier to get like a Megathron uh, police skin or, you know, any of the police skins, basically, <laughs> uh, besides the Comet one. So I got that one. But in any case, yeah, so it's crazy what people will spend their money on and that can really, um, you know, either somebody made a whole bunch of money because of however they got it. Um, I believe, like, there isn't, is there any real way to get it besides Plex in the game? And, I mean, Ix, Isk, of course, because you're... But, like, how is how is clothing generated? Nobody's, like, a tailor or anything in this game. Do you Ooh, know? Oh, there's, there's a few ways. There are a few different ways. The first one is we can say the faction clothing. You get it by LP. Okay, yeah. Or you can actually drop it. Uh, in this that category, we we find all the all the beret you have on, all the coats, <laughs> all the navy coats, all the Mordus coats, all the blood raider coats, all that stuff. The second one is event drops. When there's an event, mm -hmm. may it okay. be a faction event, may it be a ratting event. You do a certain amount, and eventually, some lucky motherfucker ends up dropping a suit that some other idiot, namely me. We'll buy for two billion esque. <laughs> some will be awarded during ceremonies. Some will just be added in with, uh, you know, uh, Eve's uh, new Eden store packs. Or going yeah, to well, fan fest stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, maybe will... you're going to a specific event. Maybe they'll give you a specific suit. And since there were 300 people at that event, you can now go to the Gita market and sell it to 40 billion isk because there's someone who will buy it. <laughs> uh, some may be granted to capsuleers for exceptional work. I can't recall any, like very, very specific, but the Conquered and the Project Discovery clothing belongs in that. Okay, yep. Uh, in that path. How do and you get this... the uh, Triglavian one? Uh, you can... First of all, you can just drop them. Yeah, they are a drop. From you the... Can, from the, uh, Abyssals, or...? Uh, the... And not the Encounter Suits, the other ones. They're really, really expensive. Not the Battle Armor, there's two of them. Uh, there's three of them. There is a full suit of Power Armor, which I do not recall the name of, that was given to Kybernauts. Uh, the CCP went, oh, we're going to get in our character, we're going to get in our Trigolian character, and we're going to say, oh, Capsuleers who have done exceptional support of the Trigolians during the war will receive this suit. It's a blood red power armor, it is cool as fuck, and the cheapest you'll get it for a male character is 16 to 20 billion, for a female character is 8 to 12. Uh, you can get them through, I think it's just like... Uh, a drop via referring someone to the game. 
which oh, is okay. how I yep. got my my encounter suit. And you can you could drop the other kind, which I don't really recall its name, when um, the PvP filaments were a thing. They're not really a thing anymore. When they were originally, I think they're called encounter filaments. They were called encounter filaments. Uh, when those were a thing, and you kicked a lot of ass, you would get a really cool suit, which is a Tregulian encounter suit with the mask off, and it's a oh, yeah, glorified yeah, yeah. hoodie. Yeah, it's a glorified hoodie, but God, is it expensive? <laughs> so this kind of sparks a, a question that I have for you. So you came in 2022. Did you yes. did you know of walk? Have you heard of walking in stations? Uh, yes. I was told about walking in stations. I had another friend who was an actual Eve. Uh, respectfully, I should call him a veteran. Practically, I will call him a fossil. <laughs> and uh, he told me about the time you could open your browser and you online. He told me about the time yep, walking yep. in stations and everything. He was there since the beta. He was double my age. And he was a great guy. Told so, me all about the stuff that happened. It wasn't right. So for walking in stations, though, is that something that... Because uh, you're a huge clothing uh, person, so I would imagine that you would want and like the idea of walking in stations and being able to like meet up with other people and just show off the clothing that you've got. Is that something that you wish that they would have in the game? Or and that you like? are you sad that you kind of missed out on a time period? That there was that in the uh, game? Well, you couldn't show other people, per se, like, come to your room, but, I mean, like, you got to actually am, see your guy, and you could walk around and sit on a couch. I'm not gonna see I'm mad I missed out. Things happen, and I got to enjoy all this stuff, and I'm really happy for it. Mm -hmm. But I think that if they do add it back, it would actually lead to extreme fucking peacocking in the clothing community. <laughs> Uh, right now, anyone who bothers to look me up on Killboard in the game will see that I am wearing incredibly cheap clothing. Outside of my my implants, which are the Treglavian breathing mask, which I bought for around 300 million, and an eye implant, which I don't recall how it was, but it was fucking expensive. I am wearing incredibly cheap clothing. I am wearing, I think, a 18th anniversary hoodie, uh, hoodie that was 20,000 esque. If they add walking in the stations back and that becomes a thing, well, I will have to bring out the Gita 4 4 outfit, which <laughs> cost me multiple billions because I say, oh, I am important. I spent so much money on clothing. And then, you know, someone of uh, Edencom suit is going to show up and say, oh, I spent even more money. And then some of uh, the Glavian suit, oh, I spent even more money. And it's going to be. It's going to be just entire battles, but outside of shooting at each other, we're just going to scream at who has the better clone. I hope it becomes a thing. It would be really fun. But I'm not really sad I missed out yeah, on yeah. walking in stations. That's that's, that's understandable. Um, and then uh, uh, bar talk, uh, Bara Talk? Talk? Bara Talk? 127 says um, that, you know... Walking in stations was a cool idea, but nothing important, I would say. And the thing that I'm... My only thing with that is I don't think they need to try and make it as beautiful as it was. Um, and I think they over... They overanalyzed how much of... Like, how much graphics, like, you needed to have in order just to be kind of cool. Um, like, I mean, Final Fantasy does really well, and the graphics are not, like, blow you out of the world kind of, like... CCP wanted to go super deep on like very you know like facial expressions and stuff like that. Um, I know that their their technology that they were working on was going towards the world of darkness, and so they were going to do a world of darkness kind of um, MMORPG that was going to be kind of like Eve Online but on Earth with vampires. And, uh, you know, like you'd have permadeath and stuff like that where your character could permanently die um, if you took certain leadership positions and stuff like that. Um, so even harsher than Eve kind of universe that they were going to build, um, which matches up with that. But anyways, so they tried like in tandem with these technologies 
um, and really developing kind of Eve alongside with, with White Wolf at the same time, when I don't think they needed to go that deep for Eve, and they should have not tied walking in stations to that. Because when they kind of came out and said, we're going to spend six months to develop this and we're not going to do any in-game kind of developments or expansions anymore for it was like six months or a year or something that they said and like everybody rioted like they just went nuts and they were like fuck this game fuck ccp fuck the world like no i don't want to wait around for this thing but if they had gone really simple um it would have been really cool to sit down at a bar with somebody and you know drink or you know they they didn't even get to the point where you could go meet somebody or go to somebody's room and i mean earth and beyond had walking in stations day one you know like it wasn't super pretty like it wasn't like oh this is like breathtakingly but it gave you a sense of self in the game and i think some people can't embody themselves as a pod pilot that never gets out of the pod basically um and that they need that kind of walking thing. Because I would, I mean, my, I guess my question to you would be like, why, why clothing? What does it matter? Nobody sees you. Like, it's not even like I, skins, ship skins, I kind of understand. That gets seen. Maybe I'll look at your picture. Maybe I'll look at your picture. But I'm really going to be looking at your killboard, at, you know, like even people that either they have no reason to look you up or the person is looking you up because you're either a threat or you're threat or they're wanting to threaten you and the picture is the last thing on the mind so what's what's the i find it interesting that that is a huge passion for you what is what is the reason that you find that uh clothing does matter in eve online right now i yeah i'd say there's a few reasons for it the the first one uh was um starts a whole debacle about eve and female characters i love a lot of people in this community i see it's one of the best communities i've ever been in but sometimes you just have a weirdo who presumes a female character woman thus i will ask the weirdest fucking shit in the world it said it as that and eventually that there was a time in history when Weirdos asking me to do weird shit made up a... I did already say half of my income. Holy I was making, shit. <laughs> I, was, I was making multiple billions of isk every month. The price was my dignity, but oh my... It wasn't profitable. A female character. Oh god. <laughs> Unless you're willing to sometimes find the idiot that will ask the weirdest shit in the world to stay the fuck away. <laughs> and the, the the second one is a, a much more personal topic, which I'm not sure belongs on an Eve interview that's going to go on that's, Twitch, but that's, it that's... is. <laughs> it's one in the morning, and I am half in on the fanfest liquor, so I might as well go into it. It's the, there I say getting in character conventionally. Uh, I tell a lot of people that meet me that I am so deep in the closet, I have Narnian citizenship. Oh. And having having a female character does play into that. I could be doing a woman voice, but I don't want to. <laughs> Thus, I act out a woman with an evil line and I say, oh, this is a game I play a lot. And I have the chance to customize a character, which I really, really am muddy. And this also plays into the fact that I yeah. have one tune. I have one character. And that's oh, okay, it. yep. So you, I, if I could get away with one character, I would probably. Um, I just got kicked out of high sec though. So, I mean, I've been kicked out of high sec yeah. for a long time. But I, I just, if I can't go there, I can't get. I can't do a lot of things that I want to be able to do, which is yeah. buy something in Jitta and bring it to where I want to be anyways. So, uh, I have that issue as well. I just cope with it. Sometimes <laughs> we get water. And I really wish I had a second character which could just get in a hauler and bring me the stuff I need. Or, you know, sometimes I really wish I had a character that just lived in high sec and I could go do my nanogangs that way. Or I had a character that I could bring in the hall and that I could use as a warning system. I mm -hmm. would just park them in a covered ops frame. Yep. 
use, on use the wormhole and that a lot. Yep. Yeah. Oh god, someone just walked into the system. Time to run because I have three billion invested in this pleasure and I don't wanna lose it. I simply said fuck it. I learned to live with all the pains that having one singular character brings, and eventually I just kind of got attached to that character and got really into it. And one of the main ways, they said it in as well, you have to feed into the whole end character thing is buying more clothing. Hell, during my, my entire career, I think I bought three pilots resculpturing licenses. Up oh, to three awesome. of them. I, I think the, my second my second one is actually really fucking funny. CCP doesn't really check the clothing a lot. I mean this with the best intentions possible, but they don't really check clothing a lot. And a lot of Triglavian clothing... I, I it may bring a lot of people to question it, but please don't cruise by me for this. If your character has the maximum boob size, <laughs> some clothing will just clip, and the boobs will break out. And it's fucking hilarious. I remember the first time I put on the hoodie that I actually have on. The, I think it's like 18th anniversary hoodie, something like that. And my character's boobs just broke out. And I broke out in the laughter for a good 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh... incredibly hilarious at the time. But I said, I can't have this. I really want to wear this hoodie. And I don't want half of my character ball clipping. So I got a first re sculpt, and then I said, I don't like the face, I'm gonna get a second re sculpt. Oh, I could have gotten some better ears, and I got a third re sculpt. And I gave CCP so much money for it. And a character that started as a joke, real, the, the name itself started as a joke. Uh, Genesis is the, name, is the name I used to go by before Rolu, and uh, Dora Kaplan was the chick that shot Lennon. It started as a joke, and eventually became. Oh, I'm really in character. I'm going to spend as much effort and as much money as I want. So that for the two people that will see my profile, they'll see, fuck, she's got a sense of style. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, is... that's definitely it's... understandable. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, it correlates to, you know, the real world. That's just, uh, it's, it's interesting that it's a lot less of, uh, cause I mean, you kind of, you know, People see you quite often in in the real world, at least you know they they get a chance to see you. But in I guess the local lets you see the characters and stuff like that. If you do double click, um, you do get to see some people and stuff like that. So there is kind of I can, but I love that it's like a role play thing for you. That it's like just this is this is your character. Like you're gonna like, and I find that a lot of people, even a lot of people who say that they don't role play any, are role playing. You know, they they are a different person when they come into Eve and they, you know, embody the Capsuleer. And once you find out how to do that in Eve, I think is what gets a lot of people kind of stuck in this game, is that you could jump into a virtual world and without any real effort of, like, I got to roleplay, you can you just start roleplaying in Eve Online. Like, and then you can go down the deep routes of, you know... Uh, there's the, uh, what, the Amar uh, role-playing group and uh, back in the day with uh, Jade Constantine and the, the group of role-players that they had for the Northern uh, treaties that they had up there. Um, but yeah, that's super awesome. I, uh, if you can give me, like, I'd say 30 seconds to a minute because I need a moment to do something but this is a topic i really do want to continue so just give me a moment entertain to sit there what 16 yeah. people we have in chat <laughs> do the funny funny man so i got myself while we're waiting i got myself a uh, lightsaber for me and my wife um i'm gonna try and not be close to the mic when i do this make sure you can see this here so this is my power off. Volume low. Steady. Steady. Color change. It changes colors. Go back to 
that's not too loud. But yeah, it's a super, super cool lightsaber that uh, I got from one for my wife, one for me. With my thank you for her coming to Fan Fest. And we're gonna do, she's super into Halloween. So, we're gonna do, and into Star Wars too. So, we're gonna do Star Wars cosplay. Getting myself a, a thing for that, and then a uh, costume for that. Got the lightsaber thing is able like to like smack into stuff so lots of really cool um people that i met at fan fest my wife said it was better than than gen con um which is insane because we go to gen con all the time all the time and uh yeah things have been really cool um been able to get a bunch of interviews so this is part one you know so this is the first interview that I've done that is part of the um, series of interviews that I'm going to be doing it's not going to be at the scheduled normal time it's going to kind of pop up uh, me and uh, Corvus are going to be talking tomorrow morning um, so I'm going to be able to meet up with the uh, the infamous Corvus uh, enemy of the Galente and uh also gonna be talking to haha -ha tonight and uh that'll be interesting um so talking to some enemies but we also do have um more people that uh we're in works with on getting onto the podcast here doing more interviews and then using sunday at 5 p.m central time 2200 eve time um we'll be doing you know just the standard Going over the war zone, talking about what's going on, talking about fan fest, stuff like that. Me, Samson, Night Flyer, so, and Howdy Night Flyer, and uh, Quiz Nippon, thank you so much for the follow. That's super cool. Um, sounds like you might be back. Yes, I am. All right. I returned from the grave. So uh, yeah, we were on, we were on to the the whole role play aspect of it, wasn't it? Where right. Yeah. So yeah, tell me I, more. What, what's what's uh, what's your mindset regarding that? I I personally think, as you said, that everyone role plays a bit once they get into Eve. Maybe it's a joke, and maybe some people are really really into it. Well, let's just look at CVA or all the faction warfare role play groups that exist. I envy their dedication, and I also envy their music taste. <laughs> so everyone does role play a bit, and the greatest example I want to point out is the bray on your head. Doesn't it still kind of play into that little aspect? That oh have? yeah, I'm I'm role playing. I'm a huge role player. I play Dungeons and Dragons. In fact, actually, after this, we stopped our Dungeons and Dragons so that we could role play us four together in uh, Baldur's Gate Three, the new video game. I love role playing, play vampire, all that kind of stuff, mage. Um, so yeah, I uh, this is definitely part of the whole role play, and I got this at Fan Fest. Um, so it was that was pretty epic. Yeah, I I think that while it's not really a a mechanical aspect in Eve, role playing is something people just do. I do think it plays a lot, lot, lot of uh, just it has a lot of weight behind. It. Even the people that do have 10, 12, 15 tunes, eventually you just grow attached to one of them. Maybe it's not in the oh I I play this tune as an actual fictional character, but you just kind of grow attached to them. I want to point back to the friend that brought me into the game, who yes does have a favorite, and yes sometimes the funny minimata jokes do pop out because it's it's just fun. We shove ourselves into a fictional universe doing all sorts of repetitive, or less repetitive tasks, and sometimes taking the shoes off the character that is uh, doing the 87th Abyssal in the span of 24 hours, it does help lessen the madness. It's, it's fun. It's fun to spend hours and hours grinding money for the sake of just buying some flashy new clothing, which you put on, and boom, CCP didn't really model it well, so since the character's boobs are too big, it folds in a really weird way, and orange clips. 
that happened to me with the Ujita Full 4 outfit, which I had spent multiple billions on. <laughs> CC, please, please check the, um, the Ujita Full 4 and the other office outfit, because they fold really weirdly. I know Ooh. none of them are probably going to see this, but if anyone does... Please tell the people that are supposed to deal with this to deal with those two because I would be really, really thankful. Aurora has said that she she's aware of the podcast and stuff like that. So yeah, possible, we will. Possible you might get out there. I've got some interviews with CCP coming up that I want to um, get solidified as the dates and stuff. There's a lot of you know contrad going around in uh, Iceland right now that just you know after the convention and stuff, but. Um, definitely got some some really good talks with them during the uh, fan fest, and looking forward to having them on. So it's all you know, it's a possibility that maybe somebody will see this. Maybe one or, or of them. Or shoot me a will... reminder, and when I talk to them, um, I will I will talk to them about this. Yeah, actually, give me a second. I'm gonna see how much the current G to fall for uh, the executive stuff is. We got clips for yeah, turtle. You can buy an outfit. Oh, yeah, seven hundred. Yeah, total is around eight hundred million esque, which is pretty cheap compared to buy eight hundred million. Isn't that bad? Yeah, it's also just a great office outfit. I I do really appreciate how sometimes CCP does think about us role plays and shoves some really really great clothing in. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah really. Glad- I'm glad that you're that you're excited about doing that stuff, even though it's not a center focus on Eve. Um, that's it's glad I'm glad that there is something like that in the game that people can can latch on to. Yeah, I God, you eat it as a white place, and it allows us to do a lot of things. <laughs> there it is, is it is sometimes having pointless fun. Is is That's, really what the game is all about? I mean, it's really its own. It's a simulated universe, you know, that is trying to really allow for as much as possible. Would have been nice to have walking stations, but I don't think it's it's required at all. But I think it would help with some people, you know, kind of embodying the game a little bit more. Um, would would that be something that if they did announce tomorrow, you know, that they were doing? A walking in stations is that something that you'd get super excited about, or would that? Oh yes, absolutely. I would fly myself to CCP headquarters and fly everyone around a bit. (laughs) So that's awesome. Um, I think we're gonna definitely wrap up at at some point here, but I wanted to kind of give you a spotlight to um, talk about. You know, we've already been talking a lot about stuff that you're passionate, but if there's anything else that you really want to get in and talk about. Um, kind of give you a kind of a spotlight as well as saying um, you know do you have anybody that you want to thank or any kind of uh, you know anybody you want to give shout outs to before we wrap everything on up here uh, yeah there are two there is one thing that I'd like to go into which is the last of my Eve career which I didn't actually complete uh, that being after seven months of straight abyssal sailing I, I took a break everyone does. I took a good month's break. And before that, I guess the Eva Gander really got me on that and said, oh, do what you want. You'll have the ability to do what you have, the impact you want. So I said, fuck it. I'm gonna listen to that. Before I go, before I take my break, I want to build a station. I could not build a station on my own. I had to ask my cult leader. It was very boring. Most of it was papers. I bought an entire Itari. I sold some stuff I had, I took all my savings, and I bought every bit for a Itari. I bought the rigs for it, I bought the defense for it, I bought the modules for it, I bought all the bits, I bought the core. I floated it all in, and um, I said to the, the guy that got me in the game, uh, I'm going to take a break now, make sure that the, the, the Itari I want to build gets built up. And they did. Sometimes I log back on, even when I don't have Omega, because I don't spend too much money actually on it right now. And I, I think it's something that, even if it is just a simulate, if it is just a bunch of pixels, something I'm proud of. 
I, I think everyone has their own little variant of it. Maybe participating in some big fat battle, or maybe their own personal wins, or maybe doing something like leaving an actual station behind. We we build things in New Eden. We build oh, yeah. all sorts of things. We build stations, and I'm happy it's not just paperweight. It's something that people use. Seeing an industrialist walk out of a station with a brand new Macarial, I think it's the Angel Battleship, and say, oh, I built this because we had this right Haru laying around. And you say, oh, I, I paid for that. It's there is, it's similar to like buying a round of beer to someone. It's it's a fun bonding experience. Oh yeah, no, that's I I'm uh, we build a lot. We do destroy a lot as well because I have built a couple of uh, stations um, in in the great uh, shining jewel of Black Rise, and uh, not a um, you know anything bigger than just the the medium structures. Um, the the Ratua, I think we built, and we built like um, the the mining one, whichever one that one is. Um, but we also have had them blown up. Um, you know, we we've uh, I've done a lot of stuff with some friends, and actually that, that's one thing that kind of I think made one of my friends be like, ah man, my station finally got blown up. We had it up for a long time. Um, for like a year and like a half or something, I think it was that we were doing it. People used it. I felt really great about that. And so I completely, like, I connect with that. That's something that I've done myself that is, I, I, and I want to have, I'm going to put up another one, even if it gets blown up, because it's kind of cool. Maybe I'll put up a trophy one that'll be in high sec that'll also be used, hopefully, but I can't use it because I'm a dirty pirate, so... You cannot, you, you have been banned. Uh, yeah, structures, awesome. I I know there's a lot of people that whine about Apple, uh, Apple structures, but I personally think they are fucking cool. I think it's awesome that there's, that that's a, a thing in the game, because when I first started, with, there was passes, but you couldn't, you could only put so many up in a system so it was um all the moons were basically already sticked from people a long time ago and it was a pain in the ass to try and deal with it because you'd have to do the war deck system and da 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 so like it was it was a pain in the ass to get something up or you had to put it up in in low sec or 0.0 .0 where it could get blown up um and i think it's kind of cool that it's still definitely destroyable you know these are not things that are immune with by being in high sec but it was it's kind of cool that like you could get like three guys together and build a station and use it and make money off of it and other people use it um and you can you know if you build even the mediums or the large sized ones you can put a market of your own in them in high sec and you can have your own real station like that's fucking awesome um you know, and then it allows for wars to happen in high sec over that kind of stuff. Um, where it's like, well, I want to own the market in this system and I'm going to kick you up because of this. Or I'm a big asshole and this is what I do. I find sandcastles and I knock them down. It's as your thing. That's evil allows you to do it. So yeah. um, nothing's permanent, but it is cool to be able to put those things up and be able to act actually like own a station in eve i like you know passes are nothing at all like owning the upwell structure and it's nothing like an actual station at all and it, the upwell structures are actually like better than station station like it's got tether like which is crazy powerful compared to an npc station yeah i I, I think I got into the game after all the cool stuff was already put up. At least like 90% of the cool stuff was already put up. So, I don't really have the rose tinted glasses of that time when life in a level was setting up a boss, then setting up another boss, and hoping to god doesn't weird shit doesn't happen, and then you move after three weeks. Right. I walked into a wormhole system that had, I think, a Fortisar and fucking three Astra Houses and two Right Towers all set up in a line. I I came in with the road 
there I say, already paid for me. Thinking there's been 20 years behind that game. It's been some people, right. I've met yep. people that have played 20 years. I yep. don't know of any other game that's had a community that lived this long because at the end of the day, it's not really about even and not sell. It's about new even citizens, pirates, and the Galente. Right. Which I will. Which I will not refer to as citizens, as they oh. deserve it. No offense given. Mm. Offense taken. <laughs> <laughs> we shall meet on the field of battle, then. As long as you're looking bling, man, that's what I would want to see. <laughs> oh, absolutely. If you want, feel free to be a, a wormhole tourist. Maybe you'll find me in one of my abyssals and get a few three uh, billion on your kill board. There we go. Sounds like a challenge. It is. Feel free to find us. <laughs> Most of us are uh, asleep during EU times, and the ones that are awake don't want to get into, uh, don't want to help each other. So, if you find anyone look, roaming around, free prey. Right. Right. Um, so, was there any other uh, topic you wanted to hit up, or any shoutouts you wanted to give before uh, we wrap things on up here? I I wanted to shout out. The, the dare I say the main reason why I'm still playing E is that being the uh, the chimney chaps who in in game are under the corp name of Swift Redemption, which are dare I say a dozen Englishmen whose only point in life, whose only point in coming together is to fuck up brave, <laughs> and it's fun. And the other uh, group of people that I had a lot of fun hanging around with was the. Uh, the Arataka Research Consortium, where roleplay is actually important. Let us call back to that time they said drifters had no balls or some shit like that. It's it's great, and even if it's not a shout out, I do really want to thank you for having me here. It's oh, my first thank time you. on something. It, it is my first time on something like this. I I really do want to thank you from the best of my heart. I will even skip over the Galente hat. I will be so much forced <laughs> to skip over that. And to really say thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk in front of 12 people on Twitch because it was really fucking fun. <laughs> awesome, I yeah. Hope, and hopefully, I, you know, we've got we've got some fans out there, so you, you'll you get a little outreach for sure. You know, somebody... I couldn't believe it when people were like came up to me and were like, you do that Faction Warfare podcast. I was like, what? You know that? <laughs> There's only like maybe a couple thousand people who know about that. Maybe. <laughs> you know, Not a all of them really. thousand is a lot of people. Well, that know kind of that there's a Faction Warfare podcast. So they're probably only like, you know, I mean, they've seen me on camera. I'm, you know, I'm always talking about it. So there's, there's a lot of people who, like, I've got about a thousand people on uh, Twitch that follow me now. So things, you know. But it is really cool, though, just a small group of people to have out hanging out, talking um, about about Eve and stuff is uh, it's always interesting. Just being a, a, a streamer, even at the the lowest level of what we do, which it's. You know. I mean, it's not the lowest level. You have me, and that means you're somewhat That's, important. There we go. <laughs> You've got that right. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, thank you for coming on. It was awesome talking to you at FanFest. It was awesome getting out there. Um, then real quick before we wrap up, uh, what do you think of uh, the the new shooter? Are you interested in that at all? Uh, yes. I The other game that has sucked away my life outside of Eve is Tarkov. So if I get to play Vanguard instead of Tarkov and Get to both leave my foot, uh, leave my feet down in the Eden, and feed my uh, my extraction shooter fetish. That would be great. I seriously hope it works out well. I seriously hope CCP doesn't fumble it, fuck it up, and do some weird stuff. And if it does come out, and if it is a fun game, I think I'll spend so so much time with it. So you know you're getting a free subscription to it, right? If you if you own yeah. one game, you own the other. So yeah. that's kind of cool. I like that idea. Like I, I, I feel much more comfortable paying twenty dollars a year per account now. For you know, it gives me access to a first-person shooter. It 
I think it di has diminishing returns that aspect of it unless they do which first person shooters are not easy to to multiplayer or you know like uh, multiple alts playing at the same time without software that's cheating and usually that's still going to be considered cheating so it kind of has diminishing returns if you have 25 alts that you all pay for okay I get it I get access to another game but I'm already paying out the Noahs for a shit ton of 25. alts but you you were doing that before there was uh, you know dust and then there's uh, or the new um it's not Havoc, that's the expansion. What, uh, what, what's the name of it again? Vanguard. Vanguard, the, that's right. it. Vanguard, yep. Cool. Um, yeah, so uh, that's awesome. I'm glad that you're you're excited a little bit about that. We'll see We'll see what they do. I hope that there's a lot of PvE kind of aspects to it, to be honest, because that's kind of something that I don't want, like, full-on just PvP all the time in my first-person shooters. I like to do some PvE activities so I can kind of get used to the game, check out different things without just getting slaughtered by people who figured the shit out already. Um, so, awesome. And then uh, the, the new Havoc expansion, I heard that some wormholes holders are getting super rich. Are you getting un ungodly rich now that there's no. like a super no. rare mineral that only worm holders get or something that was worth nothing is now worth a shit ton? I I think the price is going to stabilize very, very soon, that the gold rush is going to end. Uh, one thing that I'm actually slightly more worried about as a wormholer is the fact that the Deathless have been offering missions that actually involve wormholes. Mm. And okay. uh, that means we might have an influx of a lot of mm -hmm. null sectorists that mm -hmm. come in to do that even, quest. Even high sectors that maybe know what the fuck they're doing yeah. a little bit enough to become a threat. Um, and then probably a lot of sheep too, though. <laughs> so that'll be kind of... Yeah, nice. what I'm mostly scared about is null sec blobs. Yes. I, I yes. run away from K-Space to Anoikis to run away from the blobs. And if they ever come to us, God, I don't know what we'll do about it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Um, I mean, this is only a short-term event, though. Um, things are going to change up. It's kind of the same thing that they did for... They're basically building their jump... Or their uh, catapult right now. And... Um, that is going to end after it gets built. And so I probably, you know, around November... I would imagine that's when that that's not going to be too big of a thing anymore. Although we'll see what kind of resources you need to in order to build these Triglavian, or not Triglavian, the Deathless special destroyers that they have and stuff, the blueprints. Probably going to be pretty standardized though, if you ask. Yeah, me. I post. I personally don't expect to see things like fullerene or wormhole materials in there because it really wouldn't make too much sense. Doesn't make sense. So. We'll see, though. Um, but it, it'll be an event for the wormholers on top of it for everybody else. So it's kind of nice, including your, your... We're including you, dude. It's inclusive. So. <laughs> yes. We shall uh, We shall include everyone's perspective. Isn't that what the Galente is all about? Of being mm -hmm. nice and stuff? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, once again, thank you so much for coming on. Um, and... You know, definitely, um, I hope to talk to you in the future. I've already got tickets. You got tickets to 2025? I haven't because I don't have the money for it. But, uh, yeah, most likely I will be there. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, as soon as, uh, they were like, the tickets are on sale now. And I was like, uh, that's interesting. Um, I don't think, I, that's a joke, right? It wasn't really. Like, I, and I was like, I got done. I'm like, honey, can we please spend another like three hundred dollars plus <laughs> on Eve Online to go back? She's like, well, it was better than Gen Con, so let's go back. And next year, I'm gonna be. We just after this, we. I was like, ah, I've got to get my brand together. Like all the pins that I got from like everybody was super awesome. Um, and so, like, I was like, ah, oh, we gotta get shirts, and cool flags, and cool things, and really get the podcast out there, so I was like, screw it, everything that I deal with, the podcast, the Twitch, the YouTube, the, uh, 
corporation. I was like, everything in my Discord, everything's fe uh, Federation Frontline Report moving forward. And now we can do some cool, like, you know, give out token stuff. I just, that was one of the coolest things. Is it's just all these people coming around just being like, hey man, you want a pin? Hey man, you want a shirt? You want this? Like, we've got cool shit to hand out to cool people. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, uh, look forward to maybe, uh, uh, you know, seeing you out there. I know you, uh, probably can't make it out, of course, for the, uh, if you can't go to, you know, like, haven't set yourself up for FanFest yet, probably not going to be able to make it out for a small time group meeting, but we do have the Madtown EVE Online meetup that we're going to be doing in Madison, Wisconsin. We're going to be at IO. We've got a cool poster for that. Um, which you'll see at the the end streaming uh, where we're gonna do a little bit of a uh, little bit of a break here and then we're gonna be coming back we're gonna be playing some Boulders Gate 3 um, but check out our website federationfrontlinereport.com um, just got that built up and um, made that uh, my other two websites died and so they're getting redirected over to the new website my buddy Samson's building that for me um, so everybody go ahead and check that out you if you're interested in doing Merc work um, join up with the Federation frontline report um, we are in game we're a brand new corporation um, but we're part of uh, uh, the network friends with uh, noir mercenary organization and we do contracts and get paid to go murder things so it's, it's beautiful um, also check out Declarations of War if you're interested in a really great podcast. One of the oldest podcasts in EVE Online. I think the oldest podcast at this point in EVE Online, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, um, Alec talks a lot about different things, uh, all the way ranging from, you know, like Fan Fest to talking about different contract work to do, you know, having interviews with people, um, you know, Definitely jump on that show. Check it on out. Declarations of War. And uh, thank you all for your time. Have a great night. We, uh, if I can add a little thing. Oh, yeah, we, absolutely. Uh, we close up. I I really want to thank, first of all, you for allowing me and my, my small time ass on here. And second of all, thanking the 12 to 17 people in Twitch chat to tag along for this it put a gigantic smile on my face. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I hope that one day I will be back. Maybe with more Galenta or Michael Bond. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, you too. Have a great night. Thank you for your time. <laughs>